All right. Cool. Karine, you're going to kick her off? Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for jumping on and being on time. Um, we should, you know, start out by just saying, like, what ha what's going on in the weekend and what people are experiencing out there. There's a lot going on in the news. Um, in New York, they um, said real estate is not an essential activity and even went as far as cold calling right now is not allowed. Um, so we're all kind of waiting to see what's gonna happen in Oregon, but you know, we need to protect our deals that we're in help wrap up things. So I want to just kind of turn it over to everyone and see just what challenges are you facing? What happened over the weekend? Um, you know, let well, you, know they, you know, they turned off RMLS uh, open houses, so you can no longer do open houses. That came up on Friday. Yes, I saw that. Thanks, Evan. Yeah. Well, um, give a quick update of what's going on from the commercial side. Um, so it looks like 50% of escrows are being canceled currently for commercial. Um, from the lending side, the same thing is happening. Banks are extremely confused about what next step should be because they're tenants. And uh, and uh, I've talked with numerous people who have told me that their tenants are requesting uh, to defer payments for the rents. And that's just, that's not just multifamily, that's also commercial. Um, so my expectation is people are gonna continue to just uh, get out of the stock market and take that cash and hold on to it so they can buy some market things turn around. But it's interesting because some of the stuff the 50% that's staying on point and moving forward is being, uh, the pricing for it is extremely high, which is really interesting. So that's kind of where we are right now with, with commercial and we're continue, continuing to watch it, but there's a lot of confusion out there. I just had a actual offer canceled this morning. So where they said, you know what, let's wait 30 days. Let's wait and see what happens. So that's kind of what's happening from commercial. Outside of that, Hanging out with the kids still, which is awesome. And uh, I'm having a good time getting uh, my systems in order and what I'm going to do as soon as we come out of this. So it's a good opportunity for that. Uh, I'm seeing similar uh, cancellations on the residential side. Um, I have three transactions in escrow. One of them might close. Um, one of them... I had to deliver the worst news I've ever had to deliver in my life uh, because my client is uh, basically not well. And um, yeah, the, the lenders are just, they're putting a moratorium on funds. Thanks, thanks for sharing, uh, Gary and Linda. I know Dwight said something mentioned this morning, one of his deals, they were doing a 15 year arm and then that one got canceled because the lender is no longer moving forward with that product. So we're going to start to see things like that is Josh, are you on? Let's see. Oh yeah. Has anybody seen a uh, United Wholesale Mortgage back off? I don't think so. No. Has anybody seen United Mortgage, uh, Wholesale Mortgage back off? I don't think anyone has, but if anyone does, please reach out to Linda. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're huge. They're, I think, one of the largest wholesale lenders. And, you know, when you start taking a player like that out of the market, um, well, let's, let's talk about this a little bit. Yeah. Um, thank you. <laughs> because I, you know, this is, this is what we're starting to see on the fringes is exactly the way 2008 started. If you, if you, for those of you that were in the business, um, I can tell you that I had five transactions going in the fall of 2008 that involved jumbo loans. 
uh, sub I think three were at Wells Fargo and they froze. They they wouldn't approve the loans. And so we were going and going and they were giving us lip service. Oh, you know, would you bring in this document? Oh, would you do that? And we're like, what is going on here? And eventually they said, we're not doing loans right now. And so um, what uh, Kareen said was, I have a, I actually have a loan um, in progress and I applied for a 10 year arm and they just called me and they've been doing that to me. So I called the mortgage guy and I said, what do you mean you need a copy of a $5,000 check from two years ago? Are you serious? And, uh, and then two days later, he said they canceled that particular product. So here, why does that happen? Well, here's what happens. These people make mortgages, right? So you have your mortgage brokers, the academies of the world, the director's mortgage of the world. They put these loans together and they send them out to another company, whether it's Wells Fargo or some other company that buys the loans and bundles them. And then they sell them on the secondary market. I think a lot of you remember that. They sell them to Fannie Mae. They sell them to Freddie Mac. They sell them to the CalPERS, California Pension. They sell them to insurance companies. And what's happening behind the scenes right now is banks are getting worried that more and more people are coming in to get their cash, i.e. layoffs. We better go get what we have in the bank, honey. And so the, the banks now are not stepping up to fund those mortgages. So this is the very tip of it. And I will tell you behind the scenes, if you're watching the federal government, um, the Federal Reserve is pumping massive, massive, we're talking trillions of dollars behind the scenes into the banks right now so that the banks don't do this because that's what froze up the United States. The banks stopped loaning. And so now the Federal Reserve learned a big lesson. They're not gonna go out 90 days or 120 days. They're stepping in the gap and they're saying, you need, you need 500 billion Bank of, Bank of America, here it is. And I'm just gonna push this button and now it's on your account. And, uh, and that's what's happening. So uh, some of these, there's no doubt, some of these companies that underwrite loans are just gonna get out of the business and uh, it's not gonna be worth it. The risk will not be worth it because if they can't get rid of them, then they're stuck with mortgages and no cash. So um, that's something to watch. And um, you know, if you have any concerns about what's going on, go into YouTube. We didn't have that available in 2008, but if you wanna know, go in and, and under the search bar, start asking about uh, the Federal Reserve funding these things or the repo market or any of those other things and you'll get all kinds of dialogue on it. So it is something we have to be careful of because in the day in 2008, we had to pull our loans and try and go to lenders that actually were making loans because not all lenders were the same. So, um, you know, I would definitely watch out for that. It could happen more. Um, it shouldn't be too bad because of the amount of money that the Fed is kicking in everywhere. And, um, you know, what we're hearing about is an $800 billion stimulus, but behind the scenes, um, last I saw, they committed like, six trillion dollars in the last 120 days behind the scenes and so um anyway that's a whole dynamic that we don't see when we're just trying to close deals the money should be there so i have a question for you dwight um who would be funding loans i mean who are the people that are gonna stay in the business because Obviously, this situation is, um, it's a wholesaler, you know, they're huge, but I mean, would it be better for our, our clients to be going to a Wells Fargo or a Bank of America, somebody that um, has a little bit bigger presence? Well, there's an argument for that, but it probably depends uh, to more of a degree on the product that your people are looking at. So in my case, they stopped loaning the 10 year. Well, I still could get a 30 year or a three year or a five year or a seven year. I just happen to want the 10 year because I'm watching the 10 year treasuries drop to almost the same rate as the five year. And I thought, oh my gosh, if I can lock in for 10 years at almost the same rate I can lock in for five years, why wouldn't I do that? 
but it, it probably has something to do with, uh, you know, with the, with the product. So if you're a conforming loan, then there is no question that Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae are going to continue to buy mortgages. No question. The Fed, the Fed is backstopping them already. They're going to relieve, uh, you know, the larger underwriters certainly will have more access and quicker access to capital. But there will be plenty of these smaller companies that are thinly leveraged, that, that can't maintain the staff, that if a bundle of loans they just did last month for 10 or 15 million can't be resold. They're out of business. It's hard to tell. So you probably have to look at the product. If the product is a conforming loan with 20% down, those will probably be available without a hiccup. But if it's a 3% down product or a 5% down product, these one-off products that started to come in the mortgage industry a year ago two years ago and you have that buyer you should be careful you should be careful about where you go and maybe look at an, a government insured product like an fha low down that's that's probably what should be should be watched not to say it's happening yet but it could happen in a month josh do you want to add anything to that Sure. So, I mean, you know, my points are all very, are all very spot on. So, you know, the, the QE that the Fed's doing is pumping tons of tons of dollars uh, into um, into the secondary market. You know, Josh, will you speak up just a little bit, please? Oh, sure. I'm not sure quite where my speaker is on this computer, but uh, can you hear me? Okay. 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 <laughs> um, so anyway, what I was saying was Dwight's, Dwight's points were all spot on. Um, there is, you know, a lot of money being pumped into the Fed by, um, or pumped in uh, to uh, Fannie and Freddie and into the mortgage bond market, which is having good, you know, good results right now. So um, conforming loan products, uh, things that are backed by Freddie, Fannie, um, anything from, you know, uh, sort of 20% down on to on, on down to a 3% down product that's backed by Freddie and Fannie um, are all, all great products. So anything over the conforming loan limits, a jumbo product, and um, oh, you guys can hear me? Hold on. Yep. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, but the biggest difference between, so like United Wholesale versus someone like ourselves or directors, you know, or another direct lender is so United works uh, directly with brokers. So brokers aren't funding off of all of their own money. They're not mortgage companies. They're independent brokers that uh, broker to places like United Wholesale, <clears throat> United Wholesale, places like ourselves. And other mortgage companies who are direct lenders um, and fund off of all off of their own capital will continue to lend. You're right. There is, you know, some places that may have more liquidity um, than uh, than others, and so you may see some of that. Um, like I said, not immediately, but maybe you know, in you know, a couple months, six months, uh, some people may start struggling. Um, but as for right now. Um, that hasn't occurred, especially with companies like, uh, you know, like ours or other um, mortgage companies. Um, the portfolio products, things that are one-off, like you talked about, um, we haven't had any pullback from any of our investors yet, but we have heard some in the market from specific products that, uh, um, that are, you know, that are maybe for specific so definitely keep an eye on those. And if you have a client that's in or looking in one of those products, please make sure you're connecting with that lender. Make sure that that's, you know, that that product is still continuing. As of today, we really, been really good. So um, if anybody is going to work on something now, definitely now is a good time. But you said today the rates are really good, Josh? Today the rates are really good. Uh, more way up. Um, they actually 
past surpassed where they were a couple uh, a couple weeks ago on uh, Friday the night uh, Friday the seventh and then uh, Monday the tenth. Um, but yeah, the, some things have things have bounced way back, and um, it's probably you know not going to stay that high. Um, so definitely, if you've got people on the fence. Um, or people on the fence to refinance, uh, definitely lock into one of, one of those conforming products, you know, before we lose some of this. Okay, Josh, we had a question from Laura. What are the rates um, right now for like average for 30 year? So you could get in with about 3.625 today uh, for a 30 year, and maybe 3.5. And Again, depend, it's going to depend on lots of variables, credits, so on and so forth. Yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, you know, how much you can so, okay. uh, mm -hmm. so right about there, 15 year, you could get down to you know probably closer to three percent. Okay, thank you, Josh. Um, let's turn it over to everyone else and just. What, who had activity this weekend, um, good or bad? Oh, I went ahead and staged a new listing this week. Um, and um, another one in about two weeks. Also had a nice closing last week. And no open houses, of course, of course. We're not doing this, and I wouldn't do it anyway. And was that, so was the closing with a mobile notary? Robin? No, that was actually, I oh. believe, I, that was in person. Because okay. uh, it was a, it was last week before that, yeah. <clears throat> well, I do. So um, I have a transaction that's closing here in Portland. Uh, the sellers have moved out. They're in Seattle. Uh, the plan Friday was that they were signing with a mobile notary today, and the buyers are signing with a mobile notary as well, their loan docs. And so now I'm, I'm waiting to see if that all happens. Hopefully it will happen because um, I know mo mobile notaries are still um, out and about moving around. So uh, then I have a couple more transactions that are closing uh, in the next 10 days, and I'll, I'm going to see exactly how those go. So um, I will say on one of my transactions, we got a repair addendum last week, and uh, this is important because my owner has been just amazing. Um, he was kind of balking at some of the things we had to do. We had a radon reading. Uh, the buyers asked him to mitigate the radon, even if it needed a system. And we're scrambling right now. I went around the home uh, over the, well, let's see. I went around to the home on Friday and I realized that, that all of his vents were plugged with dirt and bark dust. And so I had a contractor go over Saturday to clean all the vents and uh, put the, uh, the, um, all the, the foundation vent well, those little, you know, smaller ones for, for the smaller vents. I had them install those where the vents were below grade. And, um, and so we're doing some odds and ends work at the house. And the way it's happening is the owner is out of town. So I'm just communicating with photos and texts with the contractor. And he's going over and communicating back to me with photos and texts. And um, I think hopefully today, if everyone shows up, um, we're going to get the crawl space finished and our end of the repairs. Um, we'll get done today and then you know presumably everything's going to freeze up in terms of this kind of work potentially um in the next few days so maybe today for you know an indefinite period of time so i told my owner i said well if you don't get these repairs done and we don't mitigate the radon the lender is not going to fund this and so do you want to try and keep the deal together or do you want to argue over three to five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars or whatever it is? And he was very clear. He said, do what you need to do. Just send me texts of what you're doing. Get the deal closed. So there you go. Happening, you know, in the last 48 hours. Thanks for sharing that, Dwight. Um, because, you know, 
financial business will still continue. So if you consider signings and title company, those kind of things are might be considered financial. So we could maybe continue to go do those. But if the inspections, things like that stop, um, then we would really have a problem with some of our transactions. Um, who else has transactions that they're in the middle of? I have one. Um, we've got a couple. I had three new listings go live last week, which was um, a challenge. No, really slim to no activity on all three of them. A couple showings here and there. Um, I've got one deal, um, we're kind of like Dwight's, where we got the repair addendum and um, counseled my client, whatever they say, you're gonna do it, because um, you're just gonna keep this deal together. And now we have the next step is an appraiser. And I just kind of had this gulp, like what if there's a stay at home order and we can't get appraisals done? And then, and then what? <laughs> so there's all these kind of dominoes that are, that are tipping and, and could slow things down. I've got another offer on new construction. And um, then it's like, okay, what if there's a stay at home order? What does that mean to builders? And your builder's going to keep building and just all those things. So there's just lots, lots and lots and lots of conversations, work that's going to be done, you know, uh, mold mitigation. Okay, what if there's a stay home order? We can't get that done. So just lots of what ifs and planning for the worst, but, you know, should I start packing? Yes, cautiously optimistic. You may get a, a couple weeks slowdown, but. So those kind of conversations I'm having a lot. Hey Cricket, what's your fallback if you can't get the mold remediated and whatnot? What, what you're, I know you're thinking ahead, you've been through these downturns. What's your, what's your next step on those transactions? What are you thinking right now? Well, we've extended one already two weeks. The, the buyer was, um, put the brakes on it and said, okay, uh, I want some time. So she's circled back around and it looks like we, we may be moving forward, just extending. And then, because the, it is a lender requirement that, it, that it's done. So we won't be able to close with that one, we won't be able to close until that's done. That's perfect. I have a question about extending, um, and maybe Josh could help answer the question. So I have a client that is, we're still negotiating repairs and we keep pushing out the, uh, inspection period so we're holding off on the appraisal um, will banks give some grace to extending people's rate locks do we have any insight on that Josh are you great question that's hey, a Josh... good question if we can't yeah. Josh might have jumped off for a sec we'll find okay. out I'll yeah, I, I will tell you. I'll tell you from the commercial side, they 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 won't do that. Okay. So I don't know if that helps anyone, but I I. Can you, can you do it for so if we're extending things, we just need to have our eyes on that date of what the rate lock is, and. My my expectation is that when things clear up a little bit, I'm gonna we're gonna see rent, uh, rates go down, a little bit more because right now, like our commercial stuff. Uh, for like a five year is about 3.6 for a five year uh, loan. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we look back like, I don't know, three weeks ago, it was at 3.1. Yeah. So that kind of tells you where things are going. So I think once things level out, it may not be the, the worst thing to, to be patient. And what, what I suggest everybody does is continue to, you know, talk with your, with your clients and really get the things in the pipeline for when things turn around. I mean, that's what, that's what I'm doing from the commercial side and from the mortgage side, that's what I'm doing. So that might be helpful. Thanks, Gary. Welcome. Um, anyone else, what else is everyone else seeing? Is anyone using the uh, COVID-19 addendum? Not yet. We're uh, planning on having Lacey send those out to uh, the opposite agents after our client sign on all the pending deals. 
that we have in place. Um, I mean, I think it's pretty much guaranteed that we're going to get the lockdown order later today if it hasn't come out yet. Has anybody heard anything? Hey, I, I would add this. We were just on the national call, and it was brought up that some of the states who have already announced the lockdowns are determining that real estate activities are an essential service. And so um, closings and signatures, and um, they've also included new construction, so new construction can continue. So it is possible, and they were talking about, you know, lobbying, right? Because the, the governor and the, and the mayor of uh, Portland um, are gonna announce something today. And so, you know, hopefully OAR is, uh, and PMAR are lobbying hard to have real estate activities be considered an essential service. And uh, so, you know, that is something to watch. We may be allowed to do a few things, probably, it might not necessarily include, you know, showings in houses or open houses or things like that, but certainly the getting transactions closed and and whatnot uh, might be good. So, um, you know, keep that in mind. I I think I did a short video too. Well, no, never mind. I'll I'll inject this later. So go ahead. Anyone else? And that's kind of why we're, gonna, we're doing these calls right now, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, even though it seems like a lot, but things are changing daily right now. So it's important that we all stay connected on that. Uh, Mike, do you want to have, have, oh, go ahead. I've got a quick one. So I have a commercial transaction that is set to close. It's been in contract for about six months. It's set to close uh, near the end of April. Peter, you're aware of this one. Um, it's an owner user. It should be a slam dunk close. I've checked in with the clients every single week, um, and they seem to be pretty confident still that they're gonna, that they're going to close. So we'll see what ends up happening with that. Great, Mike. Do you want to talk about the addendum a little bit more, or, or challenges that you've heard from agents experiencing? Yeah, it's been pretty busy on my end. Uh, you're, you have a lot of questions and most of it is fear-based. So I think the better job we do of communicating with all the players involved helps the issue. Uh, I think we have to keep in mind that we need to be solution-based, not necessarily fear-based. So the question is, is always, you know, talk to your clients, find out what their fear is and do some form of a contingency or something that allows that to happen. Uh, you know, whether it be the COVID-19 uh, uh, addendum, which is a, a good addendum that ORAF pushed through very quickly, uh, which is available on zip forms for everybody, uh, or something that just simply pushes a deadline uh, to it. I mean, one of the great tools is, is that uh, we, we have, so much more video available to us. So we literally could buy a house online and you, you could do something like a uh, subject to interior inspection. Uh, as soon as the, any uh, shelter in place discussion comes up, as soon as that's released, then you do an interior inspection. Meanwhile, it locks up the house to it. I think you're gonna see more contingencies is for a digit right to sell or, or purchase. Uh, you see a lot of that now. I have one this morning that I was talking to an agent where she had, her buyers are, have a contingent right to buy based on their house selling, and they just took an offer that it has a contingent right to buy on their house. So, you know, when you're talking through, it makes some sense many times, but you have to be the one there to give your uh, buyers and sellers some security and some wisdom to walk through it. Thanks, Mike. So, so Mike, um, can I just, this is a good point to say this. So if you listen to these activities, uh, people are listing houses, um, they're doing transactions subject to interior walkthroughs, they accept an offer with the house that's sold subject to an interior walkthrough. Are these people adapting or what? 
So what's going to happen with the people that think this way is that uh, this, is what, this is what we just heard on the call. We're calling this the buzzword move, first mover position. What this means is you're giving yourselves and your clients the, the first possibility to keep their deal together when this ban of travel is, li is lifted. So if you have a number of these lined up, you have a number of listings in the MLS that people are sitting out at home, maybe emailing you, texting you, trying to get questions answered, and, um, and you have this stuff stacking up, uh, as it were, in your pipeline of activity, then you have things to do right out of the gate. And so this is going to ensure that the that your income and your clients uh, will will receive their solution to their issue faster. And this is what we have to be doing right now. And I think that's great. Can you imagine that having three or four transactions that are all subject to interior inspection? And keep this in mind. When Gary was talking, imagine this. Imagine you're just barely able to keep a transaction together and the parties agree to 30-day extension. And then in 30 days, the mortgage rate for the buyer is a quarter of a percent lower or a half a percent lower. Is that going to compel them to close the deal? Of course it will. So all the worries about them changing their mind and, and all the other things that come up, one of the one of the main motivators when that time frame is up is the rates might be lower than when they started. It's a gift. So it's a great argument when you get there to keep people in the deal. Thanks, Dwight. And we're going to talk more about this on Wednesdays. We're going to talk about bulletproofing our transactions um, that we're in and then setting ourselves up for the other side. Um, we should hopefully know a little bit more concretely what's going on um, with the stay in place here. Um, Emily asked the chat if anyone has an update on the ability for notaries to do their job with webcam. Does anybody know about that? I did a quick Google, Emily, but we'll, we'll reach out to our title friends to find out more about that. Uh, let's switch yeah, gears. I'll reach out. I'll reach out to um, our title partners and find out what their thoughts are on that. Great. And then, question from Chris: What are we telling sellers that um, that want to list their home right now? List it. Put it <laughs> in the MLS, even if it doesn't have photos snap a picture as a screenshot from Google Earth and put it in the MLS. That's what I do. Agreed. We had one that was going to go on next week and we just bumped it up to go a week earlier. Do it now. Get the pipeline of people looking at it built up. Yeah, that's great advice because even if people are looking at it while they're sitting at home. I, I agree with that. Get your listings on it. Um, I had three listings I put on this last week. We moved one up early. I want them out there. While buyers are stuck at home, I want them seeing homes waiting for some relief to come in place and for a good reason for them to go out. Great. Thanks, guys. Um, okay, let's switch gears to mindset. So with all of this going on and all of the buzz in our clients' ears, our ears, what is everyone doing to stay positive. And let's, I'm gonna turn it over to Heather to kind of kick us off for mindset. Well, there's been so many really positive things people have been trying to put, get out there like on Facebook and things like that, because I think they're like a lot of us and they're, they've been hearing so many negative things that um, they've been sharing different ideas about, you know, self care or focusing on self improvement while we're at home right now or um, you know, just different things like that. So what are some of the things that you guys are doing to keep your mindset positive? I can tell you that uh, yesterday, Lisa and I and Marcus, Cameron, and Connor, three of my four sons that are in town, went up to the LO track to do a workout in the sun, to get out in the sun. And while we were there, <laughs> We saw Drew Coleman from the Hassan Company and his family of three kids, three young kids, and his neighbor and his family of, I think, two or three young kids also up at the track 
doing a family and neighbor, you know, kind of get out in the sun, do an activity. And so anyway, um, that may not be, we might not be able to do that much more based on all the grief everyone's getting for being out on the beaches and hiking trails. But, uh, you know, that's, that was fun. It was really fun. Well, yeah, and nature is supposed to be one of the best things to help you with your mindset. So even if it just means you're sitting in your backyard or like uh, Diane posted a picture of sitting on her balcony this weekend in the, out in the nice weather. I mean, just getting that fresh air. I mean, even if we have to just open a window and sit in front of it, it's really, you know, nature's one of the best things that you can do. I mean, what else are you guys doing? Mark Schultz is on his treadmill. Yeah, <laughs> I was just yeah we're, getting, we're getting kind of dizzy watching you, Mark. Yes, I am. <laughs> so, um, my right now. My yeah, youngest I'm walking through Paris, Paris right now. There's all these walks. So basically over here in Summerfield. Basically over here in Summerfield, um, a lot of people are walking and I'm walking and we're running into, of course, neighbors and everyone seems really positive and um, are just asking how everyone's doing. Also um, on nextdoor.com, which I see all the time, I see a lot of people are standing up to help us elderly here and um, it's really um, inspiring. I was driving through Summerfield um, over the weekend and I saw, it must have been 40 people out in the clubhouse parking lot doing line dancing. It was awesome. And one of our clients was leading the whole charge, but no lie, 40 people at least doing line dancing. That that's made me smile. That's fantastic. That's one of the things I was actually gonna say. I have a challenge with my youngest daughter before we eat lunch on our, while we're working at home, we're gonna have a dance off in our kitchen for just to get our spirits up and laugh and have some fun and why not? Kids love that stuff. It's really good for you. I will say I also mean, that this, come on, let's, this, let's do this, this Zoom meeting has, this platform has been a lifesaver. Um, and being able to visual with my elderly 91 year old dad to have his family from all around the country, we got him on Zoom. And it was great. I could see his spirits raised. And so being able to actually see people as opposed to being on the phone is great. So thank you for ever invented Zoom or having this be available for us to use. It's helping my family immediately. And Zoom happy hours mm -hmm. and um, all sorts of reasons and ways to connect using this platform. That's awesome. Happy hours so on Thursdays. Yeah. Hey, so there's a, a little note for fun, right? We're going to have time. We're going to look for things to keep us busy. So Zoom is um, ticker symbol ZM. And if you go in and you look at like the 90-day chart, you're going to see what Zoom is doing. It's, uh, of course, they're, they're just going ballistic right now with people signing up for Zoom. And, um, and it's like counter-cyclical, right? So the, so the stock market is going down, but Zoom is going up. And so these are the kinds of things to put in the back of your mind for an event like this, because, um, you know, it, it's important to diversify your, your portfolio of investments. And um, this is a really, really good time with this event, because we haven't seen a pandemic for 100 years to be watching what you have your stocks invested in and things that are behaving better, like Amazon.com the other day was only down 10 percent. And you look at it. If you had a whole bunch of Boeing stock or you had a whole bunch of airline stocks, you'd be suffering right now. So anyway, good time to look at your portfolio completely off the topic, but. Dwight, Dwight, another good one is DocuSign. Oh, is that a stock? Yeah, DocuSign is a really good one too. Oh, cool, okay. Now I didn't even realize that was a stock. I didn't think about it, I'm gonna look it up. Yeah, it's a good one. Hey, in our neighborhood, um, someone reached out and all of the neighbors within a two block radius are sharing all of their names and numbers. And, um, and we're trying to identify some of the elderly people. So we have a couple older people, um, just like a couple houses away. And uh, so we're knocking on the door and making sure that, um, you know, they have our number if they need anything because, uh, you know, we, we can get around. So probably a good idea. I mean, if I, if I was smart, I would have taken the initiative as Dwight Schwab, the realtor, to do that with all my neighbors. But I think somebody actually reached out to us with the, with the idea. Well, like Megan has told us so many different times that it, 
it helps so much for your own mindset to do something nice for somebody else. So this is a fantastic opportunity for us to do that. Yep. And Megan, uh, last week, Emily shared a little bit about the resources list that you guys are giving out. Um, and then will you share a little bit more of what you're doing with your neighbors and in your community? Uh, yeah, so we've been, we've been walking Bernie a whole lot more. So we're getting a ton more FaceTime just with neighbors and introducing ourselves. Uh, today, I'm going to be writing just like little notes for um, to just with my all our contact information and just say like if you need anything in the next couple of weeks please don't hesitate to reach out all that kind of stuff I'm gonna be starting a Facebook group as well because you know what we can do is um, put in everybody's addresses in your neighborhood and find them on Facebook and then invite them to it so that's gonna be my fun activity for this week and it's not gonna be real estate related it's just going to be hey um, we're all in this together which makes me think of the high school musical song. <laughs> well, I mean, come, there, there are opportunities here too, and that's part of mindset is, yeah, if you have to be stuck in your home, why not do something that you've always wanted to do that never really blocked out the time to do? Maybe, you know, you want to take part of a cultural book club or you want to make pasta from home or do some continuing education, like get your PV license or something that you never blocked out the time. I mean, use this as an opportunity to uh, self-improve. 100%. And um, I'm also seeing a lot of online courses. I think, I think it was like Harvard's course on happiness. It's like the study of happiness is available for free online, which Yale's I'm going to take too. because, or is it Yale? It's some. Yeah, some it started really yesterday. And are you happier? Uh, I didn't take it. I haven't had time. Oh. <laughs> Uh, and like I know our, our neighborhood's doing like a chalk decorating big thing so like there's tons of people playing with chalk outside and doing surveys for everybody walking their dogs or just walking. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And a good way to support your local neighborhoods is to buy gift cards to your favorite restaurants to keep mm -hmm. them keep them alive. That's something that's been circulating in the commercial community. Yeah. Great ideas, everyone. Yeah. Uh, Tanya, did you want to add in some more about mindset? Yes, absolutely. Um, so I was looking and thinking about what is everybody doing? And we all know every single one of us are scrolling through Facebook, right? So start joining groups. Um, pages that will bring positive things to your Facebook news feed. So you're not just bombarded with all of the cor coronavirus negative posts. I know a lot of people are trying to push a lot more, but there are some that you can join. Um, there is a group called um, Growth Mindset, uh, Positive Thoughts, Energy and Inspiration, Peaceful Mind, The Power of Positive Thinking. I also joined um, Places That I Want to Go and they're showing, you know, like Italy and uh, the Caribbean, different islands, different, just different places all over, things that you're interested in. Join those groups or those pages and you'll see pictures and just things that'll make you smile and make you happy, puppies. <laughs> um, I also was looking at different books to read, uh, Thinking for a Change by John Maxwell, Everything is Figure Outable by Marie For. Orleo Mindset with Mo is actually not a book, but it's on Connect Live, and that is today at two o'clock. So everybody needs to be on that. Um, and then also some podcasts. Um, Unlocking Us with Breen Brown, the Dave Ramsey Show. We're all talking about cutting your expenses. So um, Dave Ramsey Show. I'm sure he's going to be focused on that a lot lately. And Happiness Lab with Dr. Lori Santos and the American Life podcast. Um, the other thing that I really want to push out to everybody is make sure that you go to Connect Live. They, KWRI is working really, really hard towards um, providing as much information, strategies, um, just everything to help us get through this time. Um, the Shift Book Club will start on Tuesday at 
10 a.m. and I saw it was on again on uh, Thursday. And then one last thing, um, everyone should have received an email yesterday from KWRI and the subject of the email is we're here for you and ready to pivot together. There is a link on that that will take you to a pivot um, shift ahead website on connect.com. We are going to have this um, posted out on the Facebook group. So if you don't have the email, you can click on that. And at the bottom, it says I'm all in and it's a button that'll take you to it. And on there is a schedule of the pivot power sessions. Um, the videos different videos that came out last week on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Um, you can choose what subject you want to be able to watch those videos. And then there's resources. There are scripts galore on there for every possible thing that you can think about. There uh, is MAPS coaching, of course, and right now they've offered that 50% um, off for the next two months for those that are already in it and free for the next two months for anybody, next two months for anybody that joins now. Uh, I can't tell you how beneficial having my MAPS coach has been. She is, she's helping send me all kinds of information that I can provide to all of you. And um, there's so much that actually now working at home, I'm gonna be able to focus more on. There are things on there, um, tools to help you and your clients. And when you click on that, the at the very bottom it's red and there's a button next to it there are it takes you to kelly covered and keller mortgage and there are a, a quick there is a quick link for you to create a landing page for your your lending site there are sms text messages social media assets phone scripts email templates all there for you to take advantage of and utilize uh, to to talk to everybody about refining, um, looking at lowering their costs with their mortgage, con uh, consolidating their loans. Um, Keller Covered is our insurance. You can get possibly better rates on your insurance than what you currently have, not only for you and your clients. Um, just, and then there's a button on there for you now to save money with your own loan. But great, great information that we all need to take advantage of this right now. Did you, um, are you prepared to talk about Pivot? Me? Yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, pivot is, um, pivot, pivot is what they're calling it, the Pivot, Pivot Now, and that's the Pivot web uh, Facebook group. It was Shift, and now they're calling it, I think it's Pivot Shift. Um, Pivot shift ahead is what it's called now, and it's it, it, like I said, it's just it's everybody that that is at KWRI. It's agents and team leaders and OPs all around the U.S. that are joining in and talking about what's working for them, what's changed in their areas, and how they're utilizing it for their business. And there's a calendar that you can find, right? Yep, it's on that page. So if you click that link. Uh, from your email or um, I'm going to have Austin work on the Facebook post so that you can just click from that. It'll take you right to it. Um, I haven't figured out how to get to it from, uh, let's see if it's on the leadership tech guide. No, I haven't figured out where to find it directly, but I can find it from the link. So we'll share that to everybody. Thanks, Jenny. That's a great link with a lot of resources. Um, and then we will all talk again on Wednesday, same time. Um, please, again, come with your challenges, things that are going on. We'll hopefully we'll know more from our governor, mayors, about what's going on in the Portland area. Um, another email that we got over the weekend was from Gary Keller, and it was a, an email exchange that he had um, with his friend, and I just want to read one line out of it because it was, you know, it's really compelling since we're talking about mindset. And it says, success will come to those who quickly shift their mindset from where they are and how they got there and pivot to where they want to be and what it will take to get there. 
So I really like that because, you know, we all, everyone, there's so many successful people at our office, but we all have to just be prepared to kind of pivot how we're thinking, change temporarily and go in the right direction. Come in here. Not right now. <laughs> I think Alex's babies have joined him. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, and Josh answered, oh, Josh answered my question about uh, the question from you guys about the rate lock. So he said there's no updates on rate lock extensions yet. Um, how, however, with new loans, they've been defaulting to longer lock times. So new deals coming in are going to have a 60 day lock. Yeah, so if they're raising the, the, the term of the locks, then it's their expectation that rates are going to stay in this range or drop or they wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. So that's a good sign for us in real estate. Very good sign. Great. Well, Dwight, you want to say anything to wrap it up? Um, I would say that on our, on our national call that we had this morning, uh, Mike Bastian came on. Mike Bastian is the fellow that leads Market Center Financials. He's kind of the guru of, one of the gurus of math and Keller Williams. And so he had a little bit of a segment on um, how you evaluate your expenses to determine whether they're worth continuing or not. And so I would just take like one minute to go over this because people can be thinking about it. And I'll go over it again. But number one, um, you know, the conclusion on the call was that we have to be prepared as realtors. This may be our new normal, right? And so the habits that we start to use, like Zoom, like DocuSign, those are the habits um, that we are forming right now that may actually be what we need to use going forward. And then Mike specifically made the comment that the savings that you have in your personal life and in your business will be in the pennies. And so in his mindset, every expense is worth an evaluation. And so he had three questions you ask yourself, um, particularly for your business expenses. So question number one was, how does this bring me a return on my investment? So if I buy this, if I continue to pay for this, am I actually getting a return on investment? And so you have to evaluate that because there are plenty of things that we do and maybe it's paying for leads, right? Maybe um, I'm paying for leads and I was paying a thousand or 2000 or 3000. And now um, that's going to be, it's questionable whether that's going to have any value or not. Um, maybe there's other things that we're doing in terms of advertising that won't be worth it. And, um, and then question number two was, do I need, do I 100% need this expense? In other words, can I live without it? And if the answer is I absolutely 100% need it, then I consider extending with it. And then the third question was, what can I do to get it lowered or down to zero? And so, um, you know, uh, one of the things that uh, came to my mind was that uh, a few months back, Heather uh, went to our um, Pacific Office Automation and said, wait, we're not, more people are working from home. The copiers are not being used for the numbers of copies that we projected when we took out our leases. We need to reevaluate our copy cost, our copier cost. And she got significant save it, savings from Pacific Automation. It may be time to do that again, you know, because now people are even, you know, they're, they're, they have to go home, they have to work from home. It was an option before. So anyway, those are three things to do. And remember it was said earlier, pull out your visa, pull out your checkbook, look at every single thing that you're paying for. Um, and the savings will be in the penny, pennies and uh, just have that perspective. That's all I have to say today. <laughs> Thanks, and we had Oh, a question came in from Robert about, you know, who everyone uses for 3D video. And Alex said, Travis Stanley. Anyone else have anyone to share for 3D video services? I absolutely believe in Matterport. I've been using it for four years. And right now, while buyers are sitting at home, it's the best way that they can virtually walk through my listings. 
if you haven't done Matterport for your listing, consider it. Get it done right now. Good point. Great. Thanks, everyone. Well, good luck out there. Everyone have a great day. And hopefully you jump on a lot of those live connect videos tomorrow. And then we will chat with y'all again Wednesday morning. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you, everyone.